Hello, um, my name's Neil Gosling. I'm a lecturer in evolution and paleobiology at the University of Southampton in the School of Biological Sciences. I work on lots of different questions to do with evolution and in particular at the moment I've been working and supervising a PhD project by Chris Barker looking at spinosaurs, um, a very interesting and um, sometimes controversial group of large fish-eating dinosaurs from uh, across the world but with a, a very interesting distribution throughout Europe and um, the paper that we've just had published is expanding on that research. In the, our latest paper we have rather than going out digging or waiting for someone to find something on the foreshore in the Isle of Wight, uh, we've spoke to colleagues at the Hastings Museum and Phil came across Phil Hadland came across a specimen of a tooth of a spinosaur and so we were quite interested because it, it looked like it was amongst the oldest if not the oldest then certainly amongst the oldest spinosaur material that we've got in Britain and Chris spent an awful long time analyzing it uh, picking out the features uh, scoring them against known spinosaur teeth we weren't really sure what it was. So Chris ran a discriminant function analysis. He's run um, a cluster analysis and a phylogenetic, phylogenetic analysis. And what's really interesting, what's really exciting about this is this tooth doesn't belong with any of the known groups or species of spinosaur that have been described so far. And this means that we have an, uh, a sort of an, an undescribed and a hidden diversity of spinosaurs in Britain and surely in other places around the world as well. And so we don't have to be digging or looking along you know, in, in, in fossil beds for specimens to describe. We can actually go back to museums and working with great curators, we can pull out specimens which are 100, 150, 200 years old, and we can reanalyze and we can start to maybe get a better idea of ancient diversity of groups which are, you know, long extinct and um, frankly quite exciting. I'd like um, readers to take away from this is that we, we have this idea that there's this large diversity of herbivores and there's a much smaller diversity of the things that are eating them. Well, quite clearly, okay, we're, we're talking about a span of, you know, tens of millions of years here, but we've got vastly greater diversity of these weird, um, charismatic, exciting theropod dinosaurs than we expected. So we've probably got an equally weird and uh, un, un, unexplored, under underdeveloped, um, idea about the, the herbivorous dinosaurs as well. Um, but I think the real thing I want people to take away is that the museum collections and curators are incredibly important. Not just the story that we've come up with and, 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 and the results of what we've found, but the fact that all of science um, relies on the knowledge of, 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 of all kinds of different people. It's not just the academics sitting in universities. It's not just the students who are studying all these things. It, it's, it's everybody. And so having um, really good curators who know this, their, their collections and who are able to work with us and who we can all work together with um, enables us to get a much better picture of what was going on 130, 100, well, 125, 130 million years ago. So one of the things that's really important is that this work has been carried out by Chris Barker and he has, um, I, you know, he's pretty much described the diversity of British Spinosaurids um, for his PhD. We have material that we know at currently is the youngest Spinosaur material and this tooth, if it isn't the oldest Spinosaur material, this is certainly amongst the oldest material that we have. So we've, we've covered the diversity in his project.